dimensional analysis, which uh, is kind of the art of transforming one kind of unit into another kind of unit. So our focus here is we want to develop a way or a technique of calculating measurements in a variety of units. For example, if I give you a measurement that is in feet, could you convert it into a measurement that is in meters? In science, we really, really pay attention to this, right? We pay very close attention to units, and there's reasons why. Let me tell you a story. Uh, in 1999, NASA was commissioned to build a spacecraft, and they worked with engineers from both the United States and Europe. And uh, these engineers, when they got together, they started talking about a very specific type of pressure, I think it is. But one group of scientists talk about, talked about pressure in, in the imperial units, and the other group of scientists talk about pressure in the metric units. And they found out that this little difference made it so that when the rocket ship went up to, to Mars, they missed Mars by like hundreds of thousands of miles because the mathematics, the units, didn't uh, match. Now scientists have agreed to use the same kinds of units when they're talking to each other to kind of eliminate this mishap. Uh, basically they got together at a giant convention, and they do every year, but uh, they developed this idea of scientifique internationale, actually it's French, but uh, a vast majority of the scientists simply call it SI units. So the question becomes, what units do scientists use when they start talking about time? Well, scientists are going to use seconds. And they'll abbreviate it either S for seconds, or sometimes you see it SEC. The unit that scientists use for distance, though, is the metric system. They use meters to discuss distances, and that uh, abbreviation is meters. When we're talking about mass, it's kilograms, and that abbreviation is kg. And now this is interesting, because what could speed be in? And if we take a look, there are two components to speed. There's a distance component, and there's a time component. So if we put the two together, it is meters per or over seconds. Okay, That is usually written as m over s. And you may see it like this, or like this, um, very commonly. Well, here we go. Dimensional analysis is a process of converting one kind of unit into another with the use of these ideas of conversion factors, or sometimes people call them ratios. Now, you intrinsically know this, whether you know it or not. Now, my son, Ethan, is very excited to get the change that's in my pocket. And, uh, but in reality, that is just a little piece of metal that represents something else. And so a dollar is a piece of paper that represents so many coins. So one dollar equals, let's say, 100 cents, right? But that's not the only coin that's in my pocket. One dollar could also equal four quarters. One dollar could equal, let's say, 20 nickels. So, you know, you know conversion factors to begin with. And there are hundreds of conversion factors from what is a dozen to how many days are in a week to how many meters are in a foot. But uh, for examples in this lecture, why don't we drill down on this one dollar equals four quarters. Now, I can make conversion factors out of that idea. And here's how I do it. I take the first characteristic, one dollar, and I put it over the other characteristic, four quarters. Okay, and what is cool about this is, the fact is, if I replace one dollar with four quarters, it would be four quarters over four quarters, and when you do the division, you get it by a one, and multiplying by one is really cool. But, if I make four dollars equal to four quarters, I can flip it. 
I can make one dollar equal to four quarters, and I can make four quarters equal to one dollar, and I can do what's called the reciprocal, which means I can flip the top and the bottom. Four quarters over one dollar. And these two things mean exactly the same thing. So here we go. Your brother decides to pay you $28, but he pays you in quarters. How many quarters is that? Now check this out. I've put 28 in green here, and I have put how many in orange, and I've used these to clue you in. Now when we're going to do math problems in my class, on the left hand side we need to put what we know. And so I've kind of uh, clued you in. And then on the right hand side we're going to put what we want to figure out. Okay. So when I read this question, I'm reading and I'm looking for, okay, what do we know and what are we trying to find out? So your brother pays you twenty $28. We start with $28. And right now, the units is dollars. But when everything is said and done, I'm asking for how many quarters. So in the end, I want the unit quarters. This is where dimensional analysis comes in. And dimensional analysis is just simply a setting a bunch of ratios next to each other to convert one unit into the other. Now I've called this symbol here my field goal. And this is where conversion factors live. Conversion factors live in field goals. And now, if we take a look at our previous slide, this one, we, can see, we see that one dollar equals four quarters, or four quarters equals one dollar. And I can use that information to help me. So, the, the, the problem is I don't know which one to use. But do you see that dollars is on the top of the field goal? So, I'm going to choose the conversion factor that has dollars in the denominator. One dollar. And I do that for a reason. Because in preparation, I want to cancel dollars here with dollars here changing the unit from dollars into four quarters. And that's pretty cool because if you take a look, four quarters is what I want when I'm all said and done. Now when I do the math here, it is uh, the math is pretty straightforward. I'm going to type the number 28 into my calculator. I'm going to hit the multiplication key and 4 and hit the equal sign. When I do that, I get a number of 112. But I'm not done yet. I need to divide by the number that is right here in my dimensional analysis, 1. Now, I know that dividing by 1 seems kind of silly, because you're going to get the same number back. But in reality, we are practicing the technique. And so I, when I divide by 1, I get 112, and let's be very careful, you need to put a unit, quarters, and I am done. But let's say that you are a really nice student and you want to buy bagels for your class. And you find out that each bagel costs three quarters. If you take the $28 that, dad, uh, that your brother gave you, how many bagels could you buy? 
So here we go. Once again, on the left left hand side, what we know, we have twenty eight dollars. And on the right, the question is, what do we want to know? When everything's said and done, I want bagels. Okay? We can apply dimensional analysis. So I'm going to build a field goal to change the units of dollars into something else. And in this case, I know that four quarters equals one dollar. And I've decided to put dollars on the bottom so that I can cancel, cancel, leaving me in the unit quarters. Next, uh, I need another conversion factor to allow me to go from quarters into bagels. And so if we take a look at the problem, it says one bagel equals three quarters. I can make a conversion factor. I can say one bagel over three quarters. Or I can take the reciprocal and flip it or three quarters over one bagel. The question is, which one of these ratios do I want? Now, if I go back to my problem, I will see that I have quarters right there. Does that inform your decision of which conversion factor is going to live here? I hope you thought that this would be a good one to put right there. Here's the reason why. See what's on the bottom? Three quarters. Does that allow me to cancel quarters with quarters? Sure, one bagel. And which is cool because that's the units that I'm looking for in the end. So now I just have to do the math. The first number in my dimensional analysis is 28. The second number in my dimensional analysis is 4, so I'm going to go times 4. The third number in my dimensional analysis is 1, and that is all in the numerator. So I'm going to get out my calculator and I'm going to hit 28 times 4 times 1. And I'm going to get a really large number, which is 112. But now I need to take into account all the numbers that are in the numerator here. So I'm going to divide by 1. And then I'm going to divide by 3 again. Now the notation here, it shows a multiplication but you accomplish this by taking 112, divide by 1, and then hit the divide key again, divide by 3. When you hit enter, you're going to get what I call a calculator answer. 37.33333, lots of threes, right? 37.33333, bagels, bagels. Now, to be honest, all of these th threes are hard to say in class. So if we make this pretty in my class, I'm going to call it 37. And really, honestly, do you want to eat the 0.33 bagels? I don't. So 37, oh, naked number, bagels. And you're done.